Black holes are the driving force behind the evolution of galaxies. Without them, the properties of spiral and other forms of galaxies simply fall apart and fail to make sense. Supermassive black holes, like the one that rests at the core of our galaxy, have the power to release immense jets of material, called relativistic jets, that can prematurely age galaxies, potentially dooming them. But the influence of these monstrous things also have surprising wide-ranging effects that can stretch far beyond the limits of their own borders, sometimes influencing the evolution of neighboring galaxies. A new study from Martin Navarro and IAC is highlighting some properties that are shocking theorists and observers alike. And we're going to dig into the details, but first be sure to drop me a like, comment down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is ScienceGet. The driving force behind galaxy formation as well as the inner workings that take place within are dominated by the immense power of supermassive black holes, or active galactic nuclei, AGN for short. Without these monstrous, nearly invisible forces of nature, galaxies as we know them would not exist. It's somewhat terrifying coming to terms with how these objects, which are thousands of times smaller than the galactic material that revolves around them, at least in terms of radius, can have such a wide-reaching gravitational effect on their surroundings, even going so far as to affect neighboring galaxies. The current theory is that these supermassive black holes grow from consuming material like stars, and as they feed, they can generate immense energy, shooting out gargantuan jets of material that stretch light years of distance, as we explained in our Black Hole series, which you can watch later by checking out the link in the description. We have taken dozens of measurements of these AGN, or galactic quasars, as they're also known. But understanding how these relativistic jets, as well as the other properties of AGN, affect the evolution of their home galaxies is a central question of modern astrophysics. A new study led by Ignacio Martin Navarro, a researcher at IAC, aims to answer the question of whether or not the energy and matter projected from these galactic engines really does affect the evolution of galaxies, as well as the evolution of satellite galaxies that orbit them. Although I think common sense and one look at the bird galaxy would tell you yes, Yes, they do. Navarro and his team used Illustrious TNG, which is a deep learning AI model dedicated to simulating the known local universe, which we covered in another video on dark matter bridges, linked in the description. Supplementing the Illustrious TNG simulation they used, Navarro and his team also used the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which granted them access to data pertaining to the properties of thousands of galactic clusters and groups. And the conclusions provided by the study are quite surprising. The conclusions of Navarro's study were published on June 9th of this year in Nature. According to Annalisa Pilipich, researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy in Germany and co-author of the study, surprisingly we found that these satellite galaxies form more or fewer stars depending on their orientation with respect to the central galaxy. Just as with the observations, the illustrious TNG simulation shows a clear modulation of the star formation rate in satellite galaxies depending on their position with respect to the central galaxy. As we explained in our Dark Matter Bridges video, Illustrious TNG's code contains a specific way of handling data-intensive processes that allow it to make far more accurate simulations than supercomputers. Part of this is just that these simulations are very resource-intensive, that are taxing even for the most advanced supercomputers. AI models are quite a bit different in the way that they handle information. If you watched our video on how AI might be contributing to climate change, you'll probably remember that the strain on a given system isn't just about how powerful the hardware is, but how intelligently that hardware is being used by the software. For example, green AI has a significantly smaller carbon footprint because it uses the hardware more efficiently than some larger, power-hungry AI models. But green AI achieves the same results. The results from Navarro's study confirm that supermassive black holes play a crucial role in the evolution of the galaxies that surround them. In this image, taken directly from Navarro and Co.'s paper, we can see that the orientation of a given satellite galaxy is dictated by the difference between the photometric position angle of the central galaxy's major axis and the position angle of the satellite in respect to it. A satellite orbiting along the major axis of the AGN would have an orientation of 0 degrees, 180 degrees, or 360 degrees. 
On the other hand, if a satellite were to be located along the minor axis of the AGN, it would have an orientation of 90 or 270 degrees. Navarro and company's study didn't just look at disc-shaped galaxies like our own. In fact, most of the galaxies surveyed in their SDSS sample were elliptical. While predicting what the orientation of satellite galaxies are is impressive, what's more surprising is what this means for star formation in these galaxies. A quiescent galaxy is one that is largely inactive, meaning that star formation is either not happening or at the very least a very rare phenomenon. These inactive galaxies, according to Navarro and company, seem to be the most common along the major axis of a central AGN, and least common along the minor axis. The Large Magellanic Cloud, for example, which orbits our own galaxy, is very active, with numerous star-forming regions. In fact, the LMC is home to the Tarantula Nebula, which is the brightest stellar nursery in our cosmic neighborhood. Following Navarro and company's results, this would mean that the LMC orbits our galaxy along its minor axis. The small Magellanic Cloud, however, is slowly being torn apart and is losing massive quantities of hydrogen gas, which is slowing its star formation. Eventually, the SMC will be swallowed by the Milky Way. But the SMC and LMC are both in a similar orbit. So does this mean that the SMC should be just as active in terms of star formation? Well, despite this outflow of hydrogen gas, the SMC is still forming stars, which still seems to conform to what Navarro is suggesting. The issue with its outflow of gas seems to be more due to the fact that the Milky Way and LMC are tearing the smaller galaxy apart, like a brutal galactic tug of war. Calculating this took a lot of complex math and numerical simulations. When Navarro and his team tested the anisotropic modulation in the fraction of quiescent satellite galaxies, they found their results to be extremely accurate or as Navarro's paper puts it, statistically robust. The significance of positive amplitude was greater than three sigma, a statistical tool for calculating probability. But interestingly enough, at one point the team randomized the position angle of each of their central galaxies and re-measured the amplitude of the signal and found no modulation whatsoever. These calculations also took into account any chance for error, so it's very likely that the results will fit most galactic systems. So yes, supermassive black holes definitely affect the evolution of not only their own galaxy, but also the galaxies that orbit nearby. And while we suspected this to a degree, thanks to these data-intensive simulations, we can finally begin to chip away at the mystery surrounding their exact mechanics, which is very exciting. Navarro concludes by saying, So not only can we observe the effects of central black holes on the evolution of galaxies, but our analysis opens the way to understand the details of the interaction. This work has been possible due to collaboration between two communities, the observers and the theorists, which in the field of extragalactic astrophysics are finding that cosmological simulations are a useful tool to understand how the universe behaves. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below what you think of this study. Do you think star formation depends on the position and angle that a satellite galaxy orbits at? And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Speaking of which, look at all of those names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.